And this is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another informational Valheim video. Today we're going to take a look at some more tips and tricks. Let's get to it. So the first tip I have for you has to do with Seeker Soldiers. These things can be a little intense at times. However, there is a little trick to dealing with them that can give you a moment's peace and that is you can ride on the back of them. As long as you are on the back of them, the only attack that they can do that can damage you is the attack that he just did there. The one where they stomp on the ground. So if you are fighting one and you need a moment's peace, all you have to do is jump, well, not like that, jump on the back of them when they are doing any attack other than the stomp attack. You can also attack them like this as well. So you can wait until they go to do the stomp attack, equip whatever you want to equip. We'll go with the hammer for this one and then you can run up and jump on the back of them and you can hammer them like you see there. The next tip I have for you has to do with the mana pots or eider mead, whatever you prefer to call it. I prefer to call them mana pots. And that is you can use a mana pot in order to supercharge an attack. Let me explain. So if we jump down here to this guy and we start firing on him. You can see I am just burning through mana like crazy. However, if I pop a pot real quick, you can see that I'm able to use that mana from that whole pot. It's regening as fast as I can attack and I'm just blowing through all of that mana that it gives me there. And it's nice for a quick little boost of mana when you need one, when you are firing a lot at literally anything you are firing at. This trick works best with the Staff of Frost. However, it will work with the Staff of Embers as well. You don't have to wait until your mana regens with the Staff of Frost and it gives you a nice little extended boost with it. That's why I like to pop it when I am using the Staff of Frost in order to get an extended use from it. If you were to do this with the Staff of Embers, so I'll fire here and we will pop it. You can see I have to wait a hot second before I can cast again as where if I'm using the Staff of Frost, it just regens as I am firing. It's really handy for when you are fighting something that's a little tankier and you need to bust it down relatively quickly. This next tip has to do with dungeons in general, but is in my opinion really only useful for the newer dungeons, the Mistlands dungeons. And that tip is you can place the Wisp torches inside the dungeon because you don't need a workbench. What's interesting is you can also place the sitting log. I don't know what you would do with the sitting log, but you can totally place that in the dungeon. Maybe you could use it to like block entrances for a minute or something like that. The mist lights though, or either one of these because you can place them in a dungeon is really handy in these dungeons for helping to remember where you've been. I find it myself personally really easy to get lost in these dungeons. So let's say for example, we go through here, we clear out this area and I want to remember that I've been through this area. All I have to do is just place down a log real quick like so and there we go and now I know I've been through here. I've cleared this. I don't have to go back through it again. There isn't a lot of areas in these dungeons where there's mist, where the actual mist lights are going to be extremely useful and they will get attacked by things. I just find them best for markers. I don't know. This may help some of you, maybe not, but I figured I would uh, put this in here because I didn't realize this was a thing and I wish I had known sooner because it would have been really handy to know that it was a thing. This next one is absolutely going to blow some of your minds. So all around the mist lands, you will find these towers in all kinds of different locations. These are very interesting towers because they don't sink to the ground and they don't need any foundation support. If we just dig out from underneath of this thing, like so, you can see that it is now suspended in air. Now the fun thing about these and the reason this is interesting is because you can build off of these and they are considered foundation. You can see that is blue. So with these, it would be possible to build a full on floating base. Now this one would be a little bit difficult because I would have to go through here and level out this whole area, but you can find these in all kinds of different locations, some of which are on top of the Diverger buildings. For example, the ones that look like this, meaning that if you take down the whole building, which is relatively easy to do, you have a free floating structure that is rather high in the air that you can then build off of. Speaking of building bases high up in the sky, you will also find these large bridge structures all over the Mistlands as well. What's interesting about these is you can use these to make a base on top of them and that base is pretty much raid proof from everything except 
somewhat-ish the y'all. And I say somewhat-ish because as long as the y'all can't see you, they won't attack you. However, they do fly, so if you have a balcony or something like that and you are out on it and the y'all can see you, they will attack your sky base. If I trigger an event, I just triggered one. It was the skeleton surprise. It was just a random event. It's going to look for us up here. However, it can't reach us. Now, normally, if you were to build a tower like you see that we've got here, they would attack the bottom of it, causing the whole thing to collapse. But the interesting thing about these is these are not player made structures. This whole thing here down below is considered part of the map. So the skeletons that are not spawning for some reason that should spawn would come over here and they will not attack this structure. After a little bit of fiddling with it, we are going to detach the camera. You can see we have skeletons down here. They came up out of the water and they are just looking at us up here at the top and they can't figure out how to get to us. If we move over to the center of the structure and we detach the camera once again and we go down and take a peek, you can see it's the same situation. They just stand there looking up because they can't figure out how to get to you because they see this as part of the map. Now, some of you may not like the bases that are high up in the sky. I admit it can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. Farming's hard to do up there and it's just not the most ideal location. Although I know some people like them. For those of you who prefer a life on the ground, what about a life underground? So we're here at one of the entrances to the queen. This is the current final boss. You make the seal breaker, you get in there, you fight the queen. What you may not have noticed when you were coming up to this base is there is a small little wooden hole right here that is covered by a wooden wall. If you break that, you can go back in here and there is a whole base underneath here where the Diverger were living at. You got a table, you got some shelving units, you got uh, some kegs full of meat. Well, they're not really full of meat, but you know what I mean. Imagination. So anyway, you have a whole little base under here. Well, guess what? This base, this whole structure here, is the same as that structure that I just showed you. It's generated with the map, so they see it, the AI sees it as the map. This means that if you do one little simple thing, and that is delete this set of stairs right here so that the AI cannot get in here because they can't jump and then they won't know how to get up here and you can jump, you can come down into here and you now have a raid proof base. I don't know why it keeps giving me skeleton surprise and won't give me that they sought you out. Here we go. You can see we have some skeletons here. They are just going to bunch up here at the door because they can't figure out how to get to me. And if I go back inside, I can see them all there. I can see them outside the windows. I can stand here at the stairs, bait them all in, shoot them, do whatever I want to do. They can't get me. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, but fire spark, that is the tiniest little base. How am I supposed to have a base in there? Well, there's a fun little trick to that. All you have to do is delete a chunk of the wall towards the back of this thing and then start to hollow out the back. And there is an absolute huge amount of space behind this structure. You can even dig down a little bit and dig back up because we can't dig down any further here. This is as far as we can dig, but we can come up a little bit and start to dig back more and create a bit of a ledge up here if you needed more space. But I feel like this is a pretty decent size area for most of your workstations and you could easily put a full base back here and be completely protected from all raids. On top of that, because it is right down on the ground, you can come right out front here. You got room for a garden or in most cases, you're going to have room to plant a garden or anything else you would want to do out front. All right, and that is pretty much it for this one. This is just some of the most recent tips I've come across that I wanted to share with you. Hopefully you found them helpful and informational. If you did, consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other videos. And if you're looking for some other awesome Valheim guides, you can find one of those on the screen right now. I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos a sponsor free. You all are absolutely amazing amazing people. If you would like to become an official channel supporter, check out the links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.